Hi, my name's Sam from Viva and we're here today to introduce Guy Harper who has, as of now, gone for nearly 28 and a half days completely silent for the animals. Um, now, what we've done is we've been so impressed by Guy's campaign that we invited him over to the Dean Farm Sanctuary in order to meet Juliet and some of the animals that have been saved by Viva's campaign. Many of the animals at the sanctuary would have lived short and cruel lives if it hadn't been for them being brought here. And this is one of the things that's most important about Guy's campaign because the animals in Britain's factory farms don't have voices to speak out for their own survival and that's why his symbolic protest is most important and why he's here today. Now I'd like to introduce Juliet Galatly who's come in to interview Guy about his silent day and say and shortly he'll say his first words on camera. Congratulations! So these are going to be your first words now on camera. What would you like to say to people watching? I want my first words to be sort of an explanation for exactly why I did what I did. I went voiceless for a month because of the crazy number of animals that are being killed, over a billion in the UK alone last year, just for things like taste and habit and convenience. And they're not animals that don't feel the same emotions that we do, like love and fear and have a sense of um, suffering. You know, they have families like the family of pigs we can see behind us. and. We don't take their suffering seriously enough because, well, one of the reasons is that they, they don't have a voice. So I went voiceless because they're voiceless. And also to try and show as many people as possible that being a vegan is very easy, first of all, and also a really rewarding way to live and it's really good for your health. I think um, what you did was really poignant and it got lots of attention as well. What kind of reactions have you had? Uh, yeah, I mean, it got a lot more attention than I thought it would, sort of especially online. Um, a couple of newspaper, online newspapers interviewed me about it and the vast, vast majority was really positive things. I thank everyone out there who uh, sent me really kind messages. Obviously there was the small minority who wanted to talk down to what I was doing but yeah, most of it was really positive and I do want to thank a few people while I can, so like my mum, my dad, my brother, my brother's partner, Asher, all of my housemates at uni have been amazing, um, George who climbed Snowden with me, uh, and my two friends Rob and Tyler who went vegan for the month in solidarity with what I was doing. Oh that's lovely. So your housemates didn't try and catch you out? <laughs> <laughs> they did try and catch me out for sure, yeah. But... How does it feel to actually be speaking? Does it feel strange? It sounds really, really different. It sounds really odd. It's amazing to be able to talk again though. It's a big relief. I bet it is. I, I mean, what you did was amazing. I don't, I don't think I could even do an hour, let alone a whole month. Does it, did you learn anything from the experience? Has it changed you in any way? Um, obviously being, being silent for so long allowed quite a lot of time for uh, reflection and sort of self-reflection more specifically. Um, I'm always, I've always been one that's quite easily provoked when someone says something about veganism or plant-based diets and I would often want to you know, respond very quickly to them with my side of the story but not being able to do so with my voice I think it's taught me to that it's actually more productive to sort of take a deep breath before replying to someone and that you can have, often get more out of a conversation if you actually sort of slow down, don't go so defensive and aggressive back. And actually listen to people yeah. and sort of really get to what, yeah, what it is that's um, worrying them. It about. wasn't that long ago before I was eating yeah. meat myself, yeah. so these aren't the enemy, so to Absol speak. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, they're all potential people that are on our yeah. side because don't you think most people actually don't want cruelty to animals? It's more exactly. about burying their heads in the sand yeah. and being awakened, really. Yeah. yeah. So you raised. One thousand seven hundred and five pounds so, so far. far, yeah. And you smashed your target within nine days, which was a thousand, wasn't it? Yes. So we, we um, made the target two thousand pounds. Yeah. And so that's just two hundred and ninety-five pounds more. Yes. So people watching this, please. Please do <laughs> donate anything you can. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, yeah, that goes to Viva's campaigns. I mean, we're here because obviously these animals. <laughs> <laughs> Lily Bubbles is very naughty. <laughs> she, she's my sweetie pie. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> These animals are so full of joie, joie de vivre and such personalities, which we know. But being here at the sanctuary and seeing mum's reaction and how sophisticated their language is, I didn't realise, you read these things in books, but you don't realise how sophisticated, sophisticated they are. She can actually call back each individual piglet and they know they mean her, for example. She can call just the boys. Um, it's, it's really wonderful to watch them and know that they're safe here, but it does make it actually harder in some ways going into investigating the factory farms yeah. because you know them all as personalities. And I think mm. if people think about their cats and their dogs, mm and how they relate to them and going into a factory farm and seeing dogs give birth in crates and you know if they saw cats all in cages they would feel like we do about this and they would yeah. get it wouldn't they? Mm -hmm. Absolutely, it's just a matter of questioning a habit and a belief system that's been instilled in us for such a long time that doesn't really make much sense. But no it doesn't, yeah. it's institutionalised cruelty yeah. that's been given a stamp of approval by establishment but it's really, you know, this is 2017, it's time to stand up for all the animals. Um, Absolutely. You know, we're supposed to be a civilised nation, aren't we? <laughs> anyway, have you got any funny stories through the, your month of silence? Uh, pr probably one of the best stories was actually on, on my first day. I decided to uh, climb up Penny Fan Mountain, which is just outside of Cardiff. And um, I, went, I went up there alone, which on my first day was perhaps not the best idea. And also I didn't check the weather beforehand too and it was actually really quite severe weather conditions. It was very windy and rainy and I actually managed to get myself quite badly lost. And I had to run over to some bikers and sort of flap my arms and show them various crumpled up maps to try and work out where I was. But in the end they were actually very helpful and they took one of my business cards and said they would donate. But yeah, that could have could have been a lot worse. <laughs> so they thought you were this completely mad person coming up to them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How did you explain to them that you actually couldn't speak? Uh, so I showed them the business cards straight away, which said what I was doing and um, why. And initially, they just thought I wanted them to donate. So they were like, "Okay, so we'll we'll take it and go." <laughs> and I was like, "No, no, no, no!" And kept showing them the map. I'm lost. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh. Fantastic story. Thank you so much, Guy, for bringing attention to you know the attention of the plight of these animals to so many more new people because you did get so much attention, and the vast majority of it was really positive. So, thank you so much. <laughs> well done. Thank you.